Hello, this is Domenico Composto with Easynomics, and this is the second part of a two-part video looking at a free-floating exchange rate system. In the first video, we were looking at um, how much one euro could buy in terms of dollars. And in that foreign exchange rate system, we can see that over a 10-year period that the euro lost value, uh, it trading at one euro being able to buy one dollar and 38 cents in April of 2015, but then a year later falling, approximately April of the following year. Uh, let's see here, April about to about um, one euro only buying a dollar and seven cents. So that's a dramatic depreciation in the euro compared to the dollar. And we stated that uh, perhaps foreign exchange investors speculating on seeing the fall in the euro were selling off on the euro. Um, and that was one factor of many leading to its depreciation. Um, the United States economy uh, in 2012, 13, 14 was becoming stronger. Unemployment was falling. But the eurozone was facing some some uh, some economic uh, problems. One of them being the sovereign de uh, debt default crisis in Greece, um, and because the U.S. economy was strong, the Federal Reserve Bank announced that they were going to engage in contractionary monetary policy, thus reducing the supply of dollars. Whereas the European Central Bank was going to engage in expansionary monetary policy, thus increasing. The supply of euros. So any uh, investor that buys and sells currencies would immediately um, sell off on their euros and then buy dollars. And that's what we see here, kind of a selling off on the euro um, leading to depreciation. And if the euro is falling, then we should see the opposite happening with the dollar, that the dollar should be appreciating. So that's what we see here from um, 2014 onward, the dollar gaining strength against against the euro. Right, and here we see its appreciation, where one dollar could only buy 73 euro cents, and then it's rising to one dollar being able to buy um, 92 euro cents. Okay, so that's an appreciation. So we're going to illustrate this, um, and we're going to illustrate this. Um, by not having the demand increase for dollars, but actually show a, a reduction in the supply, another way to show an appreciation of the currency. So that's what we're going to illustrate. Okay. So uh, again, using the same uh, reason, we're going to uh, assume that foreign currency investors, speculators, are going to bet against the euro and, in, and uh, sell off on the euro holdings and buy into the dollar. And because these investors are demanding more dollars, we can either say the demand for dollars is increasing, but we can also say that the supply of dollars is decreasing. Because as they demand more dollars, they're going to absorb dollars out of the foreign exchange. The supply of dollars will be uh, reduced within the foreign exchange market. So that's what we're going to illustrate. So the supply for dollars is reduced from S1 to S2. We're going to hold the value of the currency constant at E1 in the short run, just applying our microeconomic price mechanism skills to help us with our analysis. So the quantity supplied is reduced to Q2. And that we see that the quantity demanded at Q1 is greater than the quantity supplied at Q2. So that puts upward pressure on the value of the currency. And the value of the currency begins to rise from E1 to E2. And that rise in the exchange rate leads to the quantity demanded falling along the demand curve, while the quantity supplied increases along the new S2 curve. All right, thus reaching a long-run equilibrium at point C, where quantity supplied and quantity demanded are equal, and a long-run exchange rate value is fixed at E2. Oop, I should say E2 here. 
and the corner supply and demand had established at Q3. Okay, so if there is a fall in the supply of dollars, again, investors demanding dollars, thus absorbing dollars out of the foreign exchange, thus causing the appreciation of the dollar, then that would lead to a fall in these investors' demand for the euro. So to show the depreciation of the euro, I can have the supply of euros increasing, or I can have the demand for euros decreasing to show that depreciation. So that's what we're going to do here. So there's a lack of demand or falling demand by these investors for the euro. So demand falls from D1 for euros to D2 for euros. Again, we're going to hold the value of the euro constant in the short run. And we're going to see that the coin demanded is now at Q2. While the quantity supplied is at Q1. So we see that the quantity supplied at Q1 is greater than the quantity demanded at Q2. So there's excess supply that puts downward pressure on the exchange rate value. So the exchange rate begins to fall from E1 to E2. And that fall in the exchange rate leads to an increase in the quantity demanded from point E to F and a decrease in the quantity supplied from D to F until that new equilibrium for the quantity is established at Q3, where quantity supplied is equal to quantity demanded. Okay? So this is the same scenario as our first video, but we're showing another way to illustrate a depreci depreciation. I'm sorry, a depreciation for the euro by having the demand fall and an appreciation for the dollar by having the supply decrease. Okay, another way of illustrating that appreciation and depreciation. In a free floating exchange rate system where the central bank for the US and the Eurozone is not intervening in the value of their currency in the foreign exchange market. So I'm gonna go ahead and analyze this as we would on a paper exam. As can be seen, we're illustrating a free floating exchange rate system. We're assuming that the Federal Reserve Bank, which is the central bank for the United States, and the European Central Bank, which is the central bank for the Eurozone, is not intervening um, in the foreign exchange market to manipulate the value of its currency. In graph A, we're looking at the market of US dollars in the foreign exchange rate system. Graph B, we're looking at the market of euros in the foreign exchange rate system. In graph A and B, we're measuring the quantity of those currencies on the x-axis. And in graph A, we're measuring uh, the value of dollars in terms of euros on the y-axis. And in graph B, we're measuring the value of euros in terms of dollars on the y-axis. In both graphs, we're, we have a downward sloping demand curve for the currency. Graph A is D1, demand for dollars. And in graph B, it's demand for euros, D1 and D2. We have uh, upward sloping supply curves in both graphs. In graph A, it's S1 for dollars or, and S2 for dollars. And in graph B, it's the S1 curve for euros. Looking at graph A, where the supply for dollars equals the demand for dollars at point A, it establishes an equilibrium exchange rate at E1 with an equilibrium quantity supply and demanded at Q1. In graph B, the equilibrium is established where the demand for euros, D1, equals the supply for euros, S1, at point D, providing an equilibrium exchange rate at E1 and equilibrium quantity where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded at Q1. Due to foreign exchange investors seeing the macro data for the United States and for the Eurozone and responding to um, the European Central Bank stating that they will engage in expansionary monetary policy and the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States engaging in contractionary monetary policy that, in, that incentivizes foreign exchange investors to sell off on the euro knowing that it will lose value and buy into the dollar knowing that it will increase in value. Thus, these investors increase their demand for dollars, which leads to a reduction in the supply of dollars in the foreign exchange rate. 
Thus, the supply for dollars decreases from S1 to S2. We're going to hold the value of the exchange rate constant in the short run at E1. Thus, the quantity supplied at Q2 is established at point B. And we notice that the quantity demanded at Q1 is greater than the quantity supplied at Q2. There is excess demand that puts upward pressure on the value of the dollar in terms of euros from E1 to E2. So the exchange rate increases or appreciates. The dollar appreciates from E1 to E2. That leads to the quantity supply decreasing from point B to C along the S2 curve or from Q2 to Q3, and the quantity demand decreasing from Q1 to Q3 or from point A to C along the demand curve, establishing a long run equilibrium where S2 equals D1 at point C, providing the long run exchange rate value at E2 and the quantity supplied and demanded equal at Q3. In graph B, since foreign investors are buying into the dollar and selling off on the euro, we can state that the demand for euros has fallen from D1 to D2. Um, as it shifts in to D2, we're going to hold the value of the exchange rate constant at E1. So we see at point E, at Q2, the quantity demanded is less than the quantity supplied, which is excess supply. That puts downward pressure on the exchange rate value, thus it falls from E1 to E2. And as a result, uh, a new equilibrium exchange rate will be established at where D2 equals S1 at point F, where quantity supply and demand is equal at Q3, and the long run exchange rate value is set at E2. Now, as it falls, we should state that the quantity demanded increases from E to F along the demand curve, or from Q2 to Q3, and the quantity supply decreases from D to F along the supply curve, or from Q1 to Q3. Okay? Um, and that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment, and don't forget to subscribe and to like, and, don't, and I will also put an outline of this analysis into the information section of this YouTube video. Thank you so much. All the best.